11 interview questions I wish I knew sooner. If you have ever worked in a company, you most likely know about those bad employees that are up to no good. They never produce anything of value. They never add value to the business, and some even inflict harm on the business. Well, today you will learn the very basics of asking questions and which ones. You need to ask the candidates these questions to increase the probability of adding value to your business and customers. Hiring a person without doing an IQ or personality test only has 62% success rate. Flipping a coin is 50, and the difference you make is only 12%. By giving the person you're interviewing a personality and IQ test before you waste your company's valuable time as a manager or HR representative, you can increase the percentages a great deal more. Only the IQ test part explains 20 to 25% of success in life. You would want that person working for you. But what if your business does not want to use IQ or personality tests in the hiring process? or you're not allowed to use them. Well, you can still ask the same questions to get a rough idea about the person sitting in front of you. It's called a semi-structured interview and it's used in research all over the world. What I learned is that if you understand personalities, you can simply ask the person questions that explains their personalities. It is not that hard, but you need to train for it. Conscientiousness is the second best indicator of success in life. The reason being that it's a personality trait that delivers results. If you can stay focused and organized, you can produce more in any given time. Those who have a hard time organizing themselves and stay focused will not have the ability to produce as much in any given time. This is why conscientiousness matters when you hire someone. Even though being low in this trait, it does not mean you are a psychopath. Nonetheless, it is one of the many indicators of that personality disorder. You still do not want to hire a low in consciousness personality. So the question you can ask during an interview, establishing the person's level of conscientiousness are as follows. Question one. Describe your typical week. If the person does not describe with ease a scheduled week, they might be low in conscientiousness. You should look for how quickly they respond to this question. Thinking too long or having a hard time explaining the schedule is a good indicator of not having a schedule. Is your week the same every week? If it's not the same, that might show that the person does not learn a routine to be more effective. It might also show low conscientiousness and high in openness. You will have to combine the later questions to this one. Do you like rules? Please explain why. If not, that is a sign of low conscientiousness, but it might also imply that they are liberal, high in intellect and openness. You have to combine with the result of openness trait. How would you feel about missing a detail in a work task? Here you're looking for perfectionism. If the person hates missing details, that is not a good thing since creative people are inhibited by perfectionism. Perfectionists are super high in conscientiousness. That is also a disability as a productive coworker. You should look for good enough and flexibility. Tell me about a time when you completed a task from start to finish. How many times does this happen? You're looking for if the person is following through and finishing things, if they work in either Scrum or Kanban. Starting too many things, never finishing them, results in no output and low deliverables. That is one of the problems with Scrum way of working. Kanban makes sure you actually deliver something continuously. Going on to the openness trait. Openness gives the individual the ability to question themselves, to confirm that they are in fact doing the right thing or correcting things for them and the business. I added for them, because if you combine that with what I explained at the end of this video, then you should not hire the person because they might make you go 
bankrupt. What do you think about nature? People that love nature are artistic. They love how the world is made up. They love its complexity. If they like complexity, they can take on hard tasks and try to understand them and solve them. You want this in a company. When something happens in your life or you read something interesting or you read something bad, describes what happens in you afterwards. A person that does not analyze the world will never add value to themselves and grow. Reflecting and learning from one's mistake is a huge advantage in private and work life. Repeating the same mistake over and over again is part of antisocial personality order ASDP. Psychopathy is antisocial personality disorder with an additional P for psychopathy, ASDP. Do you read or listen to poetry? Appreciating poetry and the language is also a good indicator of a good communicator, or rather that they strive for good communication. They can understand others easily. Being flexible in understanding others is a positive thing. Always nagging other people about what they mean can be tiresome. It can also affect the team performance. But there are also good things, such as if it's not done in a way that helps the team grow. One value-adding feature is if the person is asking the five whys, and we use those in business and requirement analysis and use experience research to empathize with the user and the customer. Since they are using and paying for the product, we also do not want to fix the incorrect problem since we did not listen carefully enough. Do you have hobbies? And if you have them, what are they? Here you're looking for artistic hobbies like painting, creating things, walking in nature and making things. If the person does dangerous things, that might make them not appear at work in the end. Stick to the creative types. Would you say life is complex or simple and what sparks your interests? A low in openness personality does not understand complex things. Flat earthers. They cannot conceptualize the world being round. They have a hard time seeing things from other people's perspectives. It can create conflict. Would you say life is complex or simple and what sparks your interests. A low in openness personality does not understand complex things. Flat earthers. They cannot conceptualize the world being round. They have a hard time seeing things from other people's perspectives. It can create conflict. Communication go down in the team due to a low in openness personality being introduced. They will have a hard time understanding your instructions. They will have to do it their way or not at all. You want people that work hard not looking at things in a simple manner. They should love solving complex things. Givers and takers. I told you that if a person is thinking more about themselves and being high in openness trait that they are intellectuals and love complex things. Well, if they are selfish and self-centered, they most likely will be weeded out by this last question. Make sure you ask the question for you and your company's sake. Givers and takers are easy to spot. Adam Grant, an organizational psychologist, found this easy way of identifying them. Ask these questions to all your prospects together at once. Can you give me the names of four people whose careers you have improved? If the answer is that the four names are more influential than them, then you're interviewing a taker. Please end the interview and do not hire this person. If the person names four people that are below them in a hierarchy, they are givers. There is no advantage to help people that have it harder than you. You. That means the person is a giver. You should hire this person. They will add value and output to your company. You're looking for a person medium to high in conscientiousness, but not too high. Being too high is perfectionism. Then you introduce problems you do not need by the looks of it. The research indicates that Hitler was one of them since he was high in disgust sensitivity. You can verify this yourself by reading the book Hitler's Table Talk 1941 to 1944 for 
I will link to it in the description down below. You also want a person high in openness, but why the combination? Well, if you hire a person only high in conscientiousness, they will work hard every day, but not stop and question if they're doing the correct thing for the company. They need openness trait to be high for them to question what they're doing. You also need to add the last question to weed out any personality disorders. Yes. They might be psychopaths, Machiavellian narcissists and sadists if they are takers. You would not like to hire those. Warren Buffett says that he never hires people if they do not have all three of the following. Intelligence, which is openness, energy, which is conscientiousness, and integrity, which are givers. As you can see, he never hires a person without integrity because without integrity, there is no honesty and humility. And therefore, they might be dark tetrad personalities. Now, I'm speaking to you that is learning the answers to these questions in order to get a job and not the hiring manager. Remember that they will very quickly see that you lied from the feedback from your co-workers. You will be exposed within three months tops. Then the manager can make a decision to fire you. Remember that personality is the emperor's new clothes. You cannot hide who you are from others. Everyone sees who you you are especially if a manager is trained in personality. If you want to know more about personalities, go watch my video about personality, empathy, and how you can bind different combinations of them so that you can interpret what you see. Thank you so very much for watching. I highly appreciate it. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and write a comment. Please share the knowledge so that more workplaces can be safe and fun to be in. And I will hopefully see you in the next video.